with a little bit of heat these 110 year old spokes are coming off spoke nipples not the spokes These ones have already heated up and like cool. Pulling the uh, spoke nipples off the uh, spokes so I can use the spokes as some samples. I can send them off. And then we'll take a look and see how that hub is. But uh, amazingly, they're screwing off after just a little bit of heat. There's the nipples. Took apart the front wheel on the 1910 Flanders tonight. Took all the spokes off, took the old rotted rim off, and then proceeded to go through the hub. And I thought, uh, I found it interesting. I wonder if you might. But so this is the outside nut. This is your rocker, spacer, washer. And then you have, here's the axle, and one side shorter than the other. This side screws all the way in. And what you see here, that's a felt. So there was no sealed bearings back in the day. So this would have been your seal. This is the bearings and their cages. It's quite neat. And then here's the other outside bearing and the other rocker and stuff. On the inside, you can see that the hub is the outside race. And it actually looks pretty good, you know, for being about 110 years old, 114 years old. So pretty happy with it. And there's an early grease nipple. Doesn't look like anything that you've seen in the last 100 years. It's kind of neat. So that's the hub and rockers for the 1910 Flanders. So I managed to clean up the hub, axle, and rockers off the Flanders. And uh, here's the hub, and it's really hard to see. But right there, it's an Eclipse hub, which is correct for this bike. It's really hard to see the right, right in that plane. You can see there's an arrow and it kind of runs through a crescent moon. It says Eclipse and then I think it says something like uh, Elmira, New York or something like that. I got a picture of the original um, logo. I'll, I'll put a picture of it up. So 36 hole. Uh, 30, 36 spokes that this would have had and um, looks pretty good it's definitely usable so then uh, clean up the rockers and it's what's neat is and interesting is they actually did press in um, bronze bushings this one has a steel bushing inside the bronze bushing the other side doesn't I'll have to figure out why and if I have to I'll make one but, um, you know, the idea of having a bronze bushing inside the rockers tells me that um, they, you know, they had plans for this to, to be around a long time. Like, the bronze bushings would have been replaceable, and that's like a, a wear point. You know, Harleys on their, on their rockers, they have bronze bushings, and you can press them out and put new ones in. And, and uh, so it's nice to see that in 19... 10 to 14 they had the like the, the thought of 
that these things were going to be rebuilt and the part of at least a possibility and and that they would uh they were made to last you know everything's always made to last in these eras it's quite amazing so the uh, grease nipples all came out they're all um nickeled it's just a really nice piece i i just am fascinated with the um workmanship that they did 110 years ago it's just it's really unbelievable the bearings yeah, it's hard to see but you know they have a bit of wear on them a couple are like this one right here this one you can see it's not like this one here is shiny this one here is dull that's it's shiny spots but it's it's got some corrosion some wear and i'm not sure if anyone sells these at all i'm not really sure if um what if i can replace the balls if i can simply maybe pull these pieces back put new balls in it but uh you know that's questions to ask uh you know other experts So tonight we're working on getting all the measurements off this 110-year-old Flanders 4 motorcycle muffler. Doesn't look like much, but it gives us a lot of information. So we took the muffler apart tonight as much as we could. These are the rest of these two cones. They are riveted in. So gonna have to try and figure it out I got I got the dimensions all set up pretty good so this is uh what I came up with so far and then this is the front of the muffler so the bottom half is perforated and it points forward to the bike this is a flat plate that goes behind this this is the shaft and mount we got all that dimensions this is the end cap that's removable. So we've got all those dimensions all set up. And all together, this will be the muffler for it. The only thing it doesn't show me on this is where the pipe comes in. So I got a friend who can give me some pictures of an original, possibly some measurements, and uh, we'll see what we can come up with. But... Um, pretty happy i think i got a pretty good understanding of 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 the entire muffler so i can start replicating it and we'll do these pieces in like a cardboard cutout so we can get an idea of of the taper so this is it's got a flat spot here a taper here and it looks like there was a little bit of a flat spot or maybe that's just the um shaft elongating these holes over um, the last hundred years but it kind of looks like it was made that way with just a little bit of a lip kind of neat this is fun to me well after a bit of uh grunting and swearing and i think <laughs> I think I've uh, I think I got I'm using too thick a material for this machine. All that's happening is it's just spinning like I'm just and uh, tried less pressure, more pressure, and man, I'm forcing it through. So I'm gonna have to kind of start over and see what's going on. I thought maybe these were just slick, so I cleaned them all off, and uh, yeah, I just it, it won't go. I think I'm just using too too thick a material um i didn't get an operator's manual or manual with it so i don't know what it's capable of so we'll try it again and again they're a piece of thinner stuff and uh, see what we can come up with so after a bit of investigation here uh, i realized i'm missing some parts there's supposed to be a handle here that lifts this shaft up 
And then what it does, as you can see, okay, so anyway, this shaft comes up and there's supposed to be a, an adjuster here that brings that up and then it spins a top roller at the same time. Again, I've never used one, so I didn't know that. Of course, you know, buy it and it's missing parts. Brand new. Damn it. So, I'll have to source out the, the missing parts. I've already contacted the company and just, you know, they're going to see what they can do. Frustrating. So I contacted the company I got the slip roller from and uh, they had these knobs and the instruction manual in a bag that was just not given to me. So now that I've got that figured out, I um, started playing around with it and all it's doing is it's, it's curving this, this metal. It's, so I gotta figure out how to, you know, how to set the tension and stuff still, but it's doing what I want. This, I want a full curl. So we'll put this one back in. This one's a little bit thicker. We'll see how this works. So yeah, we're gonna have to adjust this. But um, yeah, we'll play around with that a bit and uh, see if we can curl it to, in, a, in a circle so for the muffler. So there's a couple of knobs here. You loosen them up and it drops this back roller. And then uh, we'll see if this will work now. So what's happened when I first had it, it was only, this handle is only driving the bottom roller. And then there's a gear set on this side that with these knobs, what it does is it pushes it in, then pushes this uh, bottom roller up, which then engages this set of gears that now it, turns this one. So now they're both turning, which makes a big difference, trust me. I don't have this bolted down, but. So this is just my first test piece. If it works out, um, I'll use it, but I'm probably gonna make another one and just clean up all this little bit of scaling on here and stuff. But, you know, I wanted to see if this was gonna work. And... and what I'll probably do too is I'll probably get a longer piece because what's happening is as you get to the end it stays flat it's not curved so let's do what I want it to do so it's pretty rigid so I brought the back bar up which should make it a little bit more tighter of a radius Be a lot better if this was on mounted on something. But that's it, you know, um, this is gonna work. But like I say, if you look closely here, there's a bit of a flat spot here, bit of a flat spot here. 
So what I'll do is I'll get a new piece, I'll uh, do a nicer cut on it, and I'll make it longer. So then once I finish rolling it, I can cut the two ends off that are gonna be flat. And uh, that'll allow me to join it where I need to and, uh, and it's all round. It's not round and in a flat spot. Cool. And that's gonna also be able to do this, this taper. So if you put the metal in at an angle, I believe, it'll, it'll, it'll cone it. So I got some playing around to do with this. And then once it, the cone's made, then um, flatten it over. And what I'm gonna do is on my lathe, I'm gonna cut a piece of uh, thicker material. I have some thicker material, the same diameter as this inside piece. So then when I cut another circle of uh, material, I could just fold it over, just use a hammer and just fold it over to mimic this, this rolled edge, because I don't have any machinery that can do that. So I think that'll work. And then on the, uh, I'll also cut, cut this down. I'll have to uh, thread it on to, uh, or make threads to mimic this piece. So lots of work to do. And uh, yeah, that's gonna work. So we're just gonna keep rolling on and uh, so I just grabbed the seed out of the box of old junk parts. And uh, as you can see, it's bent, it's twisted, it's, it's rough. And uh, we'll see what I can do with this. But um, if you watch the video on when I got this bike, the first day back at the farmyard, when I was started talking to the farmer about, you know, restoring this bike and he laughed at me. Um, he pointed me where it was sitting, and I had a shovel. I walked over into this dirt, and it was an old, like, where an old chicken coop was. And uh, I started kind of throwing the shovel into the ground, and the first thing I hit was the seat. Believe it or not, I mean, I picked up a lot of metal out of there after, but with, like, three pokes of the shovel, I hit the seat. And... Um, when I pulled it out, there was about this much dirt on it and there was grass that was about four feet tall. And I'm standing in this tall grass and I'm yelling at the farmer, hey, hey, I found the seat. And uh, he just kind of shook his head like, whatever, kid. And uh, then I asked him, you know, how much? And he just laughed again. And, and uh, you know, because it's his, it's, you know, it's his farmyard. It doesn't matter what I got. I got the bike, you know, from another guy but um it's his so i offered money for it and he just laughed at me and said take it you know mm -hmm. so um it was uh again this thing was run over by a tractor so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pull off the old leather you know it's not salvageable there's nothing left of it and uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna see what really the rest of it looks like you know, everything's bent here, but can it be salvaged? I hope so. I think so. I mean, why not? You can see this is like really bad here, but the springs are all good. Like even this one, it might, I don't know if it'll be okay, but this is all bent, but I should be able to like straighten it out. I'll take the rivets out, you know, drill those out. And here's one of the cool things. I love this. I can't wait to get this off. It's a cycle. Like, man, that is just one of the coolest locks. You know, that's like, that's probably 100 years old. So, well, that's it. Let's get this apart. Let's take a real look at it. stuff's hard
Yeah, that's pretty ugly. All right. Yeah, that's, uh, she twisted. She's twisted. But, oh yeah, we can do something with this. So, what I'll start doing is uh, start getting some of these bolts apart, heating them up, and start taking them up, and uh, we'll start straightening this out. Yeah, this, this one here, is, she's pretty ugly. Lots of deterioration on the spring. This is the top of this of the frame. Um, this goes into the frame here. This piece here. Hmm. All right. A little bit of heat, and let's start taking it apart. about 10 more bolts so uh i won't bore you with that so let me get to this and let's see how much i can get off so that's what's left of the uh, seat after taking every single bolt apart heating it all up just can't get this one bolt out it's Gonna have to just keep heating it, but I'm trying not to heat it too much. I don't want to uh, heat the springs because these springs actually look good. And uh, you heat up springs, you'll tend to lose their tension or spring, whatever. But uh, some stuff looks uh, not great, but I think I could find these relatively easy um this piece you can actually see see on this end how it's all consistent on the on the how thick and then you get to the middle and you can see it's getting thinner and then right here right here you can see it's really thin so that's heavy corrosion right there so this piece will have to be remade These, uh, I'll probably remake them anyway because it's fairly easy on the lathe. And they're all bent and stuff. This one, this piece here is okay. Well, I mean, it's not okay, but it held together. This piece blew right out. So I don't know what, how I'm going to do that one. And these ones... We'll straighten them out and then we'll see what kind of shape they are. But, uh, you know, some stuff salvageable, you know. Um, to be honest, there's a guy who makes reproduction seats and who knows. If that's where I end up going, that's where I end up going. But, um, I don't know. I like uh, challenging myself. Let's, let's see what we can do. Hope you like that kind of stuff. Just trying to give you guys really an idea of what it's going to take and kind of follow along with the process of 
every single component, uh, you know, trying to just bring you along on this journey is really what it comes down to. Here's all the components now for the seat. So there is some salvageable piece and you know, some out there make, but uh, we'll see. A little note on progress on the spokes and stuff, spokes and nipples. I'm uh, I contacted Buchanan's in uh, the States, the United States, and they will make me some new spokes. I just gotta send them some samples. So I'll take a couple of these ones, you know, make sure they're straight, give them some um, spokes, nipples, and uh, they'll, they'll come back in stainless and I can have stainless nipples or uh, nickel plated. So I'll go with nickel plated because these ones are nickeled. So I'll continue with that. And uh, now that, like I say, now that I got the frame, you know, fairly straight where I want, I uh, picked up a, like a fabric measuring tape so that I can follow the contour uh, better. And then I'll, you know, I'll just, that's an idea at least. I know there's a big gap here. We're going to have to take that into consideration, but we'll figure it out. So then we can uh, get that tube made. The bottom tube, the top tube, and the uh, top motor mount tube. So one of the other things we're going to be playing around with is, uh, this is the clutch and um, um, belt tension set up so that that's the top tube there so what we're going to do is we're going to take all this apart and i think this piece this piece and this is all going to be able to be reused some of the bracketry will but not this side this side's really corroded so and then this too we'll have to figure out for some reason i believe there's probably a there's probably a spring in here that pushed down and kept this tension. I don't know though. So this one, we'll have to make a new one. It's rotted at the bottom, broken off. So I don't know the exact length, but we'll, we can find that out. And uh, yeah, just every single part needs to be built. It's gonna be a challenge.